G'day everyone and welcome to Aussie Tech Heads, episode 593, Thursday, the 19th of July 2018. How are you going? Uh, we've got another great show this week. We've got heaps of stories and we're going to get through them one by one and uh, hopefully keep you entertained for the next hour or so. We are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au, drag and drop website builder, free, uh, that's on the free for the pro and business plans, SSD drives in the servers, Aussie support, domain registration, easy WordPress install, Joomla, Drupal, oh, it's all going crazy. It's great. Uh, all other shows on the Aussie Tech Heads network, you could... Th- you could say, uh, the Aussie Max Zone, the My Tech Opinion, the Aussie Tech Crypto, and uh, amongst other podcasts, they would be the best ones. <laughs> so, AussieTechHeads.com, uh, AussieTechRadio.com is on the TuneIn Radio app, cross platform where you can listen to podcasts from Australia uh, 24 7, back to back. Find us on Facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, YouTube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash podcast. You'll find the show notes. All righty, now let's grab and see some video of who we've got in the hosting circle of this week. And we've got a Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Glenn. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. What have you been up to? Mate, I've been busy this week, um, pulling computers apart, changing motherboards. Yeah. Lots of fun. Nice, nice. Good stuff. And uh, also, Jordan. Hey, Jordan. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. I sound like Mr. Grumpy Pants tonight. <laughs> what have you been up to this week? Getting a few uh, whinge comments here on Facebook. Oh, right. <laughs> I think I got a little bit surprised by the uh, the surprise. Hey, we're already gone. What are you doing under your bench, plugging everything in for? <laughs> oh no, uh, no one could see you. No, that's right. Well, that's right. At least I was out of view. No, I've had a busy one. Um, flat out today. I've come un- completely unprepared with no stories today. I did read a couple of articles, but um, maybe I've got some headlines I can touch on. I don't know. We'll see, but pretty pretty, pretty busy. Pretty right. busy. Yep, that's good. That's good. Uh, yes. All right. So, look, I wanted to start off this week with a little story, and the story would be, I had. Now, look, we're up. We're still going out on Facebook Live each week. I'm trying it this week, and uh, and I think. We've got some issues, so we might have to abort that. <laughs> but anyway, but it doesn't matter. You'll have to, if those, if it keeps happening, yeah, we'll be on the YouTube. So Facebook Live, we're going to bail. So sorry, guys. We'll catch you on the YouTube. Um, look, I had a story this week that my printer started printing out crinkly paper. And so I thought, why is it printing out crinkly paper? And uh, so I did a couple of videos, and I found out why. And I got some great videos from a guy called Terry who does the who works at Fix It Fast Electronics. You can find him at fixitfastelectronics.com.au and he put together these videos and I've got a YouTube uh, link in the show notes. And he had the exact same printer and he showed me exactly what to do in a step by step video. I couldn't believe it. It was great. And it gave me the confidence to uh, to buy a replacement part from him. And it was either like a new printer for four hundred or a replacement part do it yourself for ninety five. So I thought I'm gonna have a stab at this. And so I had to buy a new fuser roller. So a fuser roller looks like this, and that's the broken one. Now it's a, it's a black little tube thing, and you can see the black rubber cover has come away, and that was, was causing the crinkly paper. So I replaced it. How easy was that? Not very, but I did it. <laughs> and the fuser, the bulb, you know, there's a bulb, a halogen globe or something. That goes through there, heats this thing little thing up to 200 degrees, this little tube. And um, yeah, but now I've got a new one. So cool. So uh, thanks, Terry. Good on you. Um, so that's my little good news story this week. Uh, what? What? Anyone else got? Anyone got a new good news story? Or we just just keen to get into some stories, some news stories. I've, I've got, got something interesting here. There's um, the Gorilla Glass Five has been updated to Gorilla Glass Six. Oh, that's good. Um. Apparently, they announced a new version of the Gorilla Glass. It's the sixth version. Yeah. And uh, Corning scientists were able to uh, engineer an entirely new material that would be survive much more multiple drops. Oh, right. Oh, that's all right. So what sort of, what phones these days are using the Gorilla Glass? Or what, what items? Uh, most phones are using them. Um, I, I, um, so, yeah. I, I guess, you know, Sorry to is there also the like a, a cover that you can get as well that's made out of Gorilla Glass, you know, those covers oh, that you put over yes. the top? Yeah, yeah. So I had one of those covers, I think, was it from, uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I've had a few of those that they work really well. They're good. I've dropped them and it's cracked. And then I thought it was the, the cover that was cracked, the, the actual phone that was cracked, but it turned out to be just the glass. So I was happy. Yeah. So that's good. So version six of the Gorilla Glass. Unreal. Yeah, they reckon at this uh, this particular gorilla, version six, um, it can survive 15 drops uh, of, of the phone from about a meter high. Um, which is about twice as much as what the the Gorilla Five can can do. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, that's good. I'm just readjusting your picture. Sorry there, Joe. Something happened there. Uh, yeah. Cool. Cool. So what? Yeah. Lovely. So that's the Gorilla Glass. Sorry, I lost my concentration there for a sec. Um, all right. Uh, were well, you in the Gorilla Glass, Jordan? Does that does that get you excited? I've got uh, I've got Gorilla Glass on everything. Yeah. All nice. my iPads. Um, the whole lot. All of it. Right, right. Where you buy it. Best thing you can do, and it's not very expensive to buy, so why not? Mm, excellent. Uh, all right. Look, have uh, look. I'll get one of you guys to do a little story while I just fix up the video for a second. Um, what have you got? Who's got one, Joe? Have you got one there? Yeah, I've got another one. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, so what's happened is I've just I've just had a couple of issues with the video, but uh, audio will be fine. So we'll just I'll just play around till I get them right, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Apparently, there's a, a new um, tool that Uber wants to bring out um, to make it easier for people to be picked up um, in the street. Right. Um, what they're thinking of doing is that to turn your smartphone into like a, a like a flag for you for the driver to be able to see. Oh yes. So yeah. So basically, what they do is it it just changes the color of your screen. So um, the the driver who's coming to pick you up, you know, can see by you waving your phone up in the air, and it's got like a different color. Like you could have red, or you can have uh, green, or you can have yellow, and um, the driver then actually knows that you're the person they're going to be picking up. Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, because I suppose, like, you know, you're there waiting. You also, they should have, like, a little green light in the car as well so you can, you know, both know what's happening. Because Yeah, the, the problem is that when when, when uh, drivers go to events like uh, concerts and, and sporting events, there's just so many people out there and they might be coming from afar, but um, they don't know who they're picking up. So, I mean, the person knows the car coming, but the driver doesn't know who they're picking up. Mm. So, therefore... What they what they're thinking of doing is they they're thinking of um, introducing this like a, a red screen or a, a yellow screen or a, you, 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 identify, you tell the driver what screen you're going to be f showing up in the air. Right, right. And uh, yeah, yeah, and the driver can then uh, sees where you are and he just pulls up there. Okay, so okay, so it can be like a different color. It doesn't have to just be the one color. It's not like a just just say green. That's the color it's going to be for everyone. So that they can say, oh, tonight I'm going to hold up a red one. Or something like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, if you just see a little bit of the link I just sent you there, there's a, a shows you a picture of what they they're doing there. All right. Well, let me get up the. I'll get that link up. Let me log into the old Facebook. I'm just going to announce just quickly that I'm we're back on Facebook. <laughs> I've been a bit sort of distant, but I thought I'd let you know why. All right. That's okay. all right. No worries. That sounds good. So everybody's like, uh, you know, I think Eric's back there saying good stuff. So we can continue on. All right. So let me get this link for you. Oh, that's the Gorilla Glass link. Hang on a sec. I'll grab that. Hang on. Grab that a copy link. Uh, copy link. Copy link. Paste. All right. Let's have a look. Here we go. Who announces new tool? So there it is. <laughs> Jordan needs the toilet and some more cordial. <laughs> nice one, Ray. Thanks, mate. Thank you. All right, there we go. I know like you guys can't see that, but I, I have got that up on the screen. What happened to the on-air sign, someone said? Oh, it's here. It's fallen over. Oh, it has fallen over. I wonder what that noise was behind me. Oh, this is all going a bit rough tonight, isn't it? <laughs> all right. We should have done a test through the week. That's what we should have done. Oh, all good. So you'll have to catch us up, catch up. You know, I suppose everyone will catch up when they catch up later. Yeah. You're talking about Gorilla Glass or something. Right. Oh, Is yeah. That your internet? I've got a message up on my screen saying the internet connection is unstable. Would that be yours or would that be mine? No, that would be that would be mine. But now I've stopped the Facebook Live, so Jordan's taking it over, so it should be fine. 
Yeah, he goes, I, I don't know what happened last week. I was here one second, I was gone the next. Right. and I, I just lost internet connectivity. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, that's right. I rem- yeah, I don't know. I think just, like, the router just had a bit of a spaz. Maybe a solar flare or something, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, or oh, Justin said he took a day off work for this. Oh, good boy. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean a day off? <clears throat> you should have had a week off in preparation for us. All right. Now, um, look, phone numbers. I've got a story here. Phone numbers have been lost in MBN migrations. Between July and December 2017, the TIO had received 661 complaints from both small businesses and residential customers about telephone number problems relating to the MBN service. Now, what was happening was people were transferring over from uh, whatever, copper or yeah, whatever, to the MBN, and then the telephone number was just going, tadas. And they said, see you later. <laughs> and, and they go, where's my number? We don't know. That's so MBN. So reasons identify that fall on the customer responsibility included customers not applying to migrate to the MBN prior to the existing network being shut off, or incorrect number transfer details being supplied during migration. So that that that's the the problems of the the customer. That's the customer's fault. However, there are reasons arising from providers' fault which were included staff and system errors, existing providers cutting off service prior to MBN connection with a new provider, and the complexities of MBN connections requiring interaction with the copper network. It's very, very complex. So reasons, uh, so that the ombudsman also found upon review of MBN service order processes that there was a noticeable variation between provider order forms. So this is the, when you know someone fills out the form to accept or to apply for the MBN. There were different forms, obviously, different providers. Several assuming consumers would want new phone numbers. How's that? So the, the MBN provider just assumed you'd want a new phone number. I don't know why. Just, yeah, why not? So, you know, don't worry about it. You've got your phone number for the last 50 years. Oh, I think he wants a new phone number, that MBN. Yeah, okay, gets a new one. Uh, so that was one of the reasons. Some forms even have a pre-ticked new number option. I don't know why. Like, why? That's just, that's, that's crazy. Another form required consumers to enter the number they wish to retain at the top of the form and provided no further opportunity to indicate they wish to keep it. And one form simply didn't ask if the customer wanted to keep their number. Uh, the TIO handed down four recommendations uh, towards reducing the occurrence, and pretty much um, all it was was you know you had to opt in, rather than opt out of uh, receiving a new number, you had to opt in. Pretty much that's that's the guts of it all. But I just can't believe that they they went around town just assuming people just wanted a new number. Crazy town. But anyway, that's what's happening. Uh, did you guys go through any of those drums? I think both of you guys are on MBN. Uh, Joe, did you go through any dramas? No, I'm not on MBN. I'm still on cable. Oh, right. When's MBN come to your town? Well, it's funny. I got a brochure sent to me the the other day, um, so it must be getting close. Mm. Yeah, we got a brochure as well, but I rang him up. I said, it's not right. I don't think it's ready. I rang him up and they said, yeah, no, it's not at your place yet. (laughs) We send those brochures out just as a matter of course, apparently. What about you, Jordan? What about MBN? Did you go through any dramas with your connection? No, not really. No, everything's good. Yep. It does frustrate me, though. I think Justin just says, who the hell wants a VoIP number? I haven't had one for 14 years. Mm, as long as you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> it frustrates but... me having to have VoIP as part of, the, a part of the modem as well. That annoys me. I prefer them just to give us a separate device for that. Have you got, have you got like, well, a VoIP phone, like a landline still? No, well, the landline's part of the NBN. Yeah, but you've got, like, a, another phone other than a mobile phone in the house that doesn't move out of the house? Yeah, it's part of the NBN. Yeah, right. Yeah, because I think... So you get your MBN modem and then your, um, your phone plugs into your modem and your, your normal phone number that you have is converted to VoIP. Yep. Uh, I think, yeah, because the... Yeah, so you don't pay like it. There's no separate type of fee to have. You can't choose whether to... to no, not... if I said I didn't want the phone, they'll knock 10 bucks off the price. Oh, right. Okay. Because yeah, right. it's 10 bucks unlimited, basically. Right, right. Okay. But, uh, you know, I mean, my mum got it and she was she said to me why would i bother you know not having a ten dollar unlimited phone i might as well have it even if i don't use it <laughs> yeah yeah well, well, well i don't know because i know with cable you'd be the same joe we've got to pay for the landline even if we don't use it which i don't i don't even have a phone plugged into it and yeah if, that's right you still got to use both yeah you still got to pay for both 
Yeah, because if I don't pay, if I say take that landline away, then I got to pay an extra thirty bucks. <laughs> that's cray cray. But anyway, that's yeah. how it is. Yeah. It doesn't save. You might as well have it. Mm, yeah, well, that's right. I might as well have it just to be, a, you know, just to stick it to them. Come tell them to come well, around and fix I it. I just it's wish. Not a matter of just wanting it or not. Sometimes you have to have it. I mean, I have my father, and he won't ring me on the mobile. He won't even. He's got no internet access at home, so I, I have to use a normal landline. Why doesn't Why doesn't he like ringing you on a mobile? I've Plus, got no idea. He's just probably old school. He just rings me on the phone number um, at home, and if I'm not home, he'll ring me later when I get home. Right. Okay. <laughs> I considered not having it because I just, like I said, I can't stand having the VoIP in the modem itself. I, I prefer it to be separate because now I can't utilise my modem to the way, I, like I would like ultimately to bridge my modem and use a different firewall. But if I bridge my modem, I lose my phone. Mm, yeah, right. So but that kind of frustrates me. I wish they'd just separate the two and just have, you know, like the old engine boxes we had mm. back in the day, just a separate SIP box for it. Couldn't you put the firewall... After at after the modem though, like just you like, like just dumb down the modem, or apart from I, that. at the moment I've I've got my modem and my firewall because I run PSNet, so I've got my modem and my firewall running. Um, um, what do they call it? Dual NAT. Yeah. So right. you basically you you open all your ports and do all your things that you want to do in your modem, and then you do it again in your firewall. Whereas if you do it as bridged your firewall can operate your modem and you don't need to worry about doing it twice. Your firewall actually manages the modem and makes it connect to the internet. Mm. But yeah. to do that, you lose all phone. Right, right. Yeah, so, but anyway, that's, that's, what's, um, that's, that's what's going on with all that sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah, I've, got, I've got my um, modem bridged to a separate router. And uh, I've, I mean, it's on cable though, and I've got a separate phone line, that, so... Yeah, well, you're fine with a separate phone line, but if you've got MBN, mm, it's all one. phones phones over the MBN, it's all one now. I mean, even my mother-in-law has got she's she doesn't want MBN, she doesn't even want internet. In fact, she uses the next door neighbor's Wi-Fi, but she has to have a modem from Telstra plugged into the wall just for her phone to work. Yeah, right. Well, I think I went through a similar situation, Joe, with my in-laws where they they didn't like uh, ringing mobile phones either, uh, but. We just just band-aided it. <laughs> this is it. We don't have a phone anymore. <laughs> the ringers on the mobile or will, will come around. So that's what we did. We were like a big bank. We said, "Do it all. Don't worry about it." Yeah. Um, all right. Um, what else, Jordan? Have you got any? What have you been up to? You got stories this week? I haven't got. You know, I've run so late this week, but I did find something on my phone. I didn't even get a chance to to bring it up and and copy it off or, or read through it. But it was just a quick one or a couple of headlines. Um, uh, where, where was it? Google got fined 6.8 million. Have you got that story? Are you going to say yes. something about that? Yeah. Well, you can do that then because you'll know more about it than me. All right. And so, Elon, yeah. Elon Musk is in a bit of trouble too <laughs> over the uh, cave divers. Have you got that one as well? No. <laughs> no? That's funny though. You can if you can say yeah. that one. That's crazy. Why? They got, they, got the, yes, they got the kids out of the cave, but he had to go and build a submarine, didn't he? <laughs> Did he actually build it, or did he all have it in his back pocket, ready for oh, one of these? Probably occasions? had it in his back pocket. No, he, they he went and built it or something, and then um, he never got to use it. I think probably he was probably just a little bit disappointed he didn't get to use yeah. it. I'd imagine, and he, he probably look, kicked a bit of a stink about it or something. I don't know. He's looking for the hero status by the sounds of it. And, yeah, um, yeah. So have you got the the follow on what he what he did that went when he went cray cray a bit. <laughs> He went cray cray and he, and he called. Apparently, the headline says here, I haven't read it, but it says Elon Musk is sorry for calling the Thai rescue diver a pedo. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> you know, crazy. Crazy. It just went, you know, he must have been a bit angry that they didn't use his submarine. He was, he was a bit out of sorts, wasn't he? I think, yes, he, he was a bit out of sorts because he said, I've got this submarine, blah, 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 use it, use it. I'm the saviour of the world. And uh, the, the guy said, Well, no, we don't want to use it. We're going to go our own way. So this, apparently, this submarine. The, the the where the kids were uh, stuck, the it was like seventy centimeters wide was the entrance or something like yeah. as part of the cave, very very yeah. small, and he had this submarine that would fit through that spot, and a kid could fit into the submarine. So because they had issues where they had to, some of the kids they I think had to give them some drugs to relax them, and uh, they had to hold their breath as they you know went through this tiny tiny little what what how the hell they got in there I don't know, but anyway they were in there, and uh, so anyway at the end of the day, uh, 
they didn't use the the submarine. So Elon gets on the Twitter. I don't know why people have Twitter accounts. It's where all the problems happen. And he goes, um, well, no... Th- yeah, well, you could... Trump will stand for that. <laughs> yeah, so something similar to uh, uh, didn't use my submarine would have been a great help. Uh, thank no, no thanks to the pedo diver or something like that. <laughs> and so now the, the uh, diver is going, well, you can't call me that on the Twitter. So he was thinking about suing him. I'm not sure what happened after that. So whether or not Yeah, he's... I didn't really follow it, but... You know, but that's, I, that just that headline gave me a bit of a chuckle. Yeah, so Elon's come come out uh, lately now and apologised because I think he was. I think the shares fell and uh, you know things were <laughs> things were looking bad. Things weren't looking good. You know, I've always had a really uh, a really kind of a, a bit of a soft spot there for old Elon. I think he's he's leading the way and doing well and doing stuff that nobody will do. And I I kind of feel sorry for him. He went out of his way, but whether it was a stunt, yeah, I don't to know. Get, to get profile or not, who knows? But. Yeah, I think like you just offer it. It should have just been here. Here, this is what I can do to help. And they said, no, look, we've got another way. Blah blah blah. Thanks anyway. And you've got to leave it at that. You can't go around calling people pedos. That's not <laughs> that's not what happens. <laughs> not these days, anyway. Uh, so yeah, this Google getting I, yeah. Sorry. I re- yeah, I reckon they would have had trouble even getting his submarine through there. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. It's crazy. Um, Joe, did you have any comments on that, or just next no, story? No, yeah. Uh, go- this Google <laughs> fine now. The EU, you know that they've been pretty uh, trigger happy over there, looking for antitrust suits and all this sort of uh, stuff. You know, that's where they think that companies have a monopoly or too big of a monopoly or too much power in the in mm. a certain marketplace. So they try and take them down a notch or two. Uh, this sort of story with the antitrust, I don't know, look. It sort of. Uh, goes against it probably I'm not sure where I stand it, it, it in a lot of aspects goes against my beliefs of like the free market system if if, if something someone like Microsoft or if you remember 2003 or something they in an Explorer debacle so over in the EU uh, the EU said listen Windows you're too big you got market dom- dominance you can't sell or you can't package Internet Explorer with your Windows Never mind that you invented it. Never mind mm. you invented Windows. Never mind you, um, you know, Bill Gates may have eaten out of a shoebox for the first two years of his business life while he was, you know, building Windows. Never mind all that. You can't, you, you can't do this. And this is what I found a bit, a bit crazy. So the same similar thing has happened to Google. They've been fined six point eight billion dollars. Uh, they announced this record, this this record fine as a response to Google breaching the antitrust rules by imposing illegal restrictions on Android device devices, make Android device makers and mobile network operators, allegedly aiming at bolstering Google search engine. So, in a nutshell, uh, that Google provides the Android operating system for free. As part of that, uh, comes Google Chrome. As part of that, comes your search engine is Google, and that's where the the problem arises. Ne- never mind that you can go to the Play Store and download another search engine if you like. It's just they just can't get, get over this. I think companies get too big, and the some people just go a bit crazy, uh, saying that you know that you're too big. We want some more money. Uh, you can't. You know you got it. You got it. So we want it. Uh, the commission. Uh, yeah, so apparently, so they've been fined, and the commission said that Google must bring the conduct effectively to an end within 90 days or face additional penalties. Now, because of it, yeah, so Google had said, now this is a bit of, bit of a long quote, I'll read some of it. Um, Today, because of Android, there are more than 24,000 devices at every price point from more than 1,300 different brands. The phones made by these companies are all different but have one thing in common, the ability to run the same applications. This is possible thanks to simple rules that ensure technical compatibility no matter what the size or shape of the device. No phone maker is even obliged to sign up to these rules. They can use or modify Android in any way they want just as Amazon has done with its fibre tablets and TV sticks. So additionally they went on and they said that they that because of this Google may begin to charge device makers for using Android if the com- if the European Commission decision is allowed to stand. So obviously it's be- it's getting kickback from the by providing the search engine it gets a little kickback, you know, uh, it's all within ha- in house but Google Alphabet will get a kickback from Google using the search engine on the phones and, and so therefore, you know, that they-, they can offset the cost of Android 
buy that. And so now they're just saying, well, if we can't offset that cost, well, we might have to start charging for Android. So everyone loses, as far as I can see. Well, you might not agree with me, but on the surface, that's how, that's how, that's how I see it. Uh, if phone makers and mobile network operators couldn't include our apps on the wide range of devices, it would upset the balance. Uh, so anyway, it just goes on and on and on. I, I pulled out some interesting stats, though. I've got a little table for those on the YouTubes and the videos. This is earlier European Commission fines. Uh, now, it looks like the biggest one that has been around is truck makers. Now, I'm not sure what that's about. That was fines totaling 3.8 billion euro, euros against several truck makers accused of price collusion. Okay, so that's that one. But the ones that we're interested in is Google, which we've just talked about, uh, Microsoft, which comes in on number three of the list there. And that was back in 2003. Intel. Now, the Intel one, that was back in 2009. They were fined 1.06 billion. Uh, which, when they were accused of offering discounts to computer makers that have, that avoided rivals, see, so once again, oh, oh, this is only on the service. You don't know the, the the guts of it, but that little summation of why. So, what Intel can't pay a computer maker? Say, so hey, listen, we want Intel chips in as many computers as we can. Uh, so, over there at ABC Computer Makers, hey, how about we give you a couple of hundred or whatever, you know, a couple of dollars to put our chips into your machine. I can't see what's wrong with that. It must obviously be once it gets to a massive scale, that's when people start having a problem. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, then back in 2018, oh, this year, back in, but this year, Qualcomm was also penalised 997 million euros when they were penalised over claims it had paid Apple to use its chips. Well, then again, what, so you can't do deals between companies anymore? I don't understand, but anyway, that's that's how it is. Do you guys agree? Disagree? Comments? No, no, I'm with you. It's just it's all a bit it's all a bit stupid. Yeah, you can't you can't see that these sort of suits aren't happening over in the US or anywhere. It just seems to be this European Union, doesn't it? Mm. Um, that's where they all. But then again, like in Russia, apparently, uh, I think was it Google? I think it might have been Google. I read. I didn't didn't pull that part out. I don't think. Uh, but I think it was over in Russia. They did change it, so when you opened up your, your phone, well, cause say it was Google, because I can't remember, say you opened up your phone, you had a choice of if you could use the Google search engine or a couple of others, and that's what the European Union wants, I think. But, uh, but you know, the same with Microsoft and Windows, like, people just installed IE anyway, because, you know, they just stuck with it, or they didn't bother going to install something else, that they were familiar with it. But nowadays, they install on Chrome, because everyone just knows it's better. Well, that's it. Yeah. That's my big story. For the week. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I understood all that, everyone. But um, yeah. yeah, do you have, do you have any opinions, Joe, on that? Or you you right for? Do you think it's a bit more just leave it open to market forces and 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 be damned with how big you get? I, I do think they should leave it open, but unfortunately, I don't think it's going to happen. I really, I really think that they're going to um, start charging for it. So. Mm. Yeah. But I do think they should leave it open, though. I think they should just charge the Europeans for it. You know, they should just go, well, any Android phone, you guys got a problem, you guys pay for it. I reckon that's what they should be doing. They should start, you know, why make the rest of the world pay? Anyway. Uh, right, let's move on to something else. Uh, Joe, what else have you got? Um, there's a... Um, um, Google's got a new update, which a lot of people are probably not going to like. Hmm. Um to their Google Chrome um, system. And what are they going to do to it? Uh, what they're thinking of doing is um, they're, they're, it's, it's, it's good in one way for security where uh, they want to try and keep websites separate from each other so they don't jump tabs to one another. Right. So if you can imagine being on, on one tab and on one website, um, so people can't jump onto the other tab onto another website. So they're, they're, they're thinking of running separate streams of websites, so to speak. Uh, right. Yes, I don't get that. I'm sorry. So... I'm kind of with you on that. I think you mean that we're not well, we're not going to be allowed to have multiple tabs. Is that what you're saying? No, no. You can still have multiple tabs, but just that each tab will be on one website only. Oh, right. So you go to Google, for example, and you can 
do you know 10 searches and have 10 different tabs or you can go to joe blow we can go to joe joe's gadgets.com or whatever and and have three tabs open on his website or is that what you mean no just each one each website only yeah that's what i mean yeah so if you went to your yeah. website and we we search for some things on your website you're saying we can have a tab for a few tabs open for just your website we couldn't have that's, tabs that's, open that's what they're thinking another of website next to it yeah, that's what they're thinking of doing. It's just to stop people from jumping the, you know, it's a security thing. Right. I'd have, right. I don't think you're going to stop people though. I think that'd be a pretty, a pretty silly move on their behalf. You know, don't they say it takes like something like three seconds to capture your crowd and when they visit your site and if they don't, if you don't get them in the first few seconds, they're gone, never to return. So, you know, if people aren't allowed to go to another website on another tab, I think that'd be pretty crazy. So apparently, okay, so when did this come out? I'm not sure how old this one here is, but I've got here, I think this is what you're talking about. Is it site isolation? That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about, yeah, site isolation, yeah. I mean, it's going to slow down your browser a little bit in order to for the, have that running, but um, that's what they're thinking of doing. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, I get it. Yes, this is this sounds yeah, so Chrome will load. So okay, so at the moment I guess what's happening is you load up Chrome and you have all your little tabs across the top and then uh, in the background you've just got say the CPU is just going, Hey, I've got Chrome, I'm pushing out one tab, I'm pushing out another tab, I'm pushing out I'm pushing out five tabs and uh, so you've got the poor little CPU and it's all in the one Chrome process. It's all five tabs, six tabs, and you know your computer starts slowing, blah blah blah. So what it's I think it's saying is that you can bypass, so you can, the computer, you can, it's going to tell the system that each, it's going to start a new process for each website. So it's not going to be the same process. So even if it, so what I'll read it, what it says here. So even if a site bypasses the same origin policy, the extra security will stop the site from stealing your data from another website. Okay, so because maybe so you've got say your internet banking open in one tab, and then you've got some dodgy porno site open in the other tab. Uh, maybe the porno site can find its way over to the next door tab to to see what's going on. So and that's yeah. because yeah, that's, that's the sort of thing you get. You know, people use a lot of hacking tricks, like you know, using the cache of the browser and stuff like that. So I think that it's all it's all geared towards security side of things. Mm. So you did. So you potentially, you'd have to open Google up again, another instance of the browser, to have the other. That's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like they're saying to do. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it will do it automatically yeah. for you because See, this is where Edge and you know makes its mistake. Well, was I haven't had trouble with it. I must admit since their last update, but you know it chews up the RAM 100 mile an hour mm. if you've got too many tabs open. Because yes. Yeah. So, so I think this is going to happen uh, auto in the next update, I think. Is that what you were saying? But you can turn it on now if you want to. So you can have a look at it. Um, and you, mm. Yeah, you can go into the, you know, the Chrome the, the, under the hood by the typing in Chrome colon, that, you know, slash, slash, flags, hash, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can, do it, you can search for it if you want to do it. <laughs> but I must any- admit, for my, my normal routine, when I'm using any browser, Google or Edge or whatever, is to use multiple instances of the browser anyway. Often I, I right click on it and, and and open another instance of Edge or Chrome and go to a different mm. website and get some other tabs going. Yeah, you know, so come back to something I was researching earlier in the other one. You know. So this this yeah. is yeah. I mean, I, I guess I guess if you have a, a a fairly decent sort of a computer where you know, it, I mean, who hasn't got four gigs of RAM on their computer these days? But if you, if you, if you haven't got four gigs of RAM, you're running an older computer. Um, your, your RAM seems to run out. So this yeah, will eight gig or ten gig would be more likely. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like so you can go in and turn it on uh, by yourself. You just follow the instructions. It's pretty easy. You relaunch it and then bang. Uh, you're up and away now the known issues yes as jordan was saying the memory the site isolation will increase chrome's memory usage by approximately 10 percent obviously mm. obviously depends on how many uh isolated sites you're going to open i guess but uh yeah. there is a there is a bit of a down downside to it there's definitely a downside to it that's what happens with edge the more you have open the more memory you use and then it block it locks itself up and mm. but i guess like for some businesses you know i guess this is the way to go like yeah, well, maybe, it may, 
is if I didn't even realise that that could have been an issue, to be honest, like, you know, so, uh, sites stealing from each other in tabs, but maybe it might is maybe it might be worthwhile to keep that in the back of your mind and next time you go to your internet banking open up a new uh, a whole new window or a whole new browser just for the internet banking uh, maybe that that's a thing to do as well but yeah I'll, I'll keep an eye on that that's interesting it always makes me laugh the internet banking with Westpac well, they they've changed it now they had I don't know if you've ever used Westpac but they had the um you had the the key on screen keyboard type scenario when you log in oh yes yeah I've seen that and you had to push the things. Yep. And I'm thinking, you know, I can understand how that's more secure because it, you know, it's harder to steal the cache and key log and all that sort of stuff. Mm, ING edit as well. Yeah. But it's, it's no good if someone's looking over your shoulder. <laughs> no. No. You know, the, the guy in the office, you know, on the computer behind you is like, oh, I can see him putting it in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, now those, even with the ATMs, they've got that little, like a uh, little awning over the keypad or something, haven't they? So people behind you can't see what you're doing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, there's... and they say you should do that even if you're, you know, using your flexi card in a just anywhere. Mm. You never know what camera could be looking at you to see what numbers you punch in, so they can use it along with whatever they've scanned when you've used it in the first place. Oh, look, all this uh, NFC business—you just got to walk past the wrong person these days and beep. Oh, there goes a hundred. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that too initially when it first came out. I thought that can't be right. They'd have to secure it somehow. But it can be fairly right. It's just that I guess it's got, always got to go back to some, you know, you can always follow the, the paper trail, can't you? You know, it's always going to, it's got to land in someone's account somewhere. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't take money now without, without a fingerprint or a passcode or something, does it? It doesn't just, it's not a simple click and. Yeah. You know, I go to the. the what you get in the market with, with an NFC chip in your phone and tap everyone's back pockets. Or a reader, you, you. I think you. I think that the NFC, like, realistically, has to be close, like, really, really close. So, like, you could probably bump into someone and and rub up a bit down at the beginning and beep <laughs> like that. Beep. But, but Is uh, that you beeping? Oh, it was. <laughs> are you beeping or just glad to see me? But, <laughs> but I, I, I guess that's it's. Uh, it's going to get deposited somewhere, isn't it? So, yeah. what's the problem? Uh, like, unless it's. And yeah, it's it's yeah, it's 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 safe enough. I've got no problem. I did have initially. I was like you, but it's, people got yeah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, look, I've got one here for you, Jordan. This one for you, Microsoft. A Microsoft one is it? It is a Microsoft one. You always hit me with the Microsoft ones. I'm not that. I don't know everything. Oh, you do. You love it. You love Microsoft. <laughs> I do. I do. I, I give you. You know. I, no, I do. Yeah. I do. E- every week, I have an experience. It just makes me think. You know, like I. I I rang up, like someone said to me the other day, I rang up one of the schools my kids were going to today or the other day to ask about what computers we should have, you know, and I had one mum say to me, oh, they've got a Mac lab down there. Should I get a Mac? Like, you know, is that important if that's what they've got? And so I rang the, I rang up the college and I said, you've got a Mac lab down there. Does that mean we should have Mac labs? And the guy on the phone says to me, no, most of the students, is 90%, 95% Windows. And we only have a Mac lab for media. So there's enough Macs in there if anybody needs one that doesn't have one on, on the day of the lesson. You know, it just makes me realise more people are using Windows than people give credit for. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But, you know? Yeah, and look, I'm with you. I see it all the time. I had another mate years ago said to me, oh, you know, we, we sell, they sell like music, uh, um, music, um, uh, like VCA, uh, what do you call it? Um I can't think of the word now, but they sell like the musical uh, courses and stuff to the right. colleges and that. Yeah. Um, and he said, every school we deal with, when we go out and we sell our, our stuff, they all have Macs, every single one of them. I said, that's probably because you're selling to the musical section of the school. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that still believe that audio and is Mac. Mac. Yeah. And graphicals and all. Yes, that's right. But, you know, but yeah, so look, well, I've been, um, that's my that's my Mac at my Mac Microsoft rant for the day. <laughs> yes, well, look, I've been looking at trying and to I bring. I see Eric's popped up there now. He's happy I've brought that up. <laughs> I've been looking at a couple of things, uh, you know, like into the future, like with the say with the web hosting, is if I want to bring on, you know, like the Office three six five subscription or the the Google Suite. Uh, subscriptions you know because apparently like you, you, i can do that uh, i can go away and, and and get 20 cents off each subscription and you know and make 20 cents on each one uh, but 
it turns out, like I'd looked at the Microsoft, I looked at the Google Suite ones, and the Google, apart from Google, just don't get back to you. Like I send them an email, I send them I, through their contact form, they just don't get back to you. And mm. so then, so that, well, I can't support that because if say if I get a support query, say come through me because I'm the supplier, what I don't. What, what sort of rubbish is that? I'm not going to put up with that. So, uh, mm. you know, so I thought, okay, let me look at Microsoft. And also Google, they wanted me, like, to kick off. They won't sell you the suite or they won't let you become a reseller of the suite unless you can at least sell 100 of them. And I thought, well, you know, I'm actually I'm not going to start off selling 100, am I? I'm going to start off selling one. I've got to sell the first one first. And Microsoft will let me do the first one. So there's a couple of things there. And look, with the, the Microsoft, with their Teams, you know that might have that might have uh, got me over the line with Microsoft, to, to be honest. Because uh, if you haven't heard of Teams, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about now. I have vaguely heard of Teams. That was that was like a um, it was like a a chat thing or something, wasn't it? Or a social thing? Yeah. So have you like got a, collab- a collaboration collaboration? Sorry, um, thing. Yeah, I don't Isn't... know if you heard of Slack. Have you heard of a thing called Slack? Yeah, it's like Slack. I've heard of that too. Yeah. Slack was the big one, wasn't it, for for a long time? Yep, yep. It's pretty. It's pretty big. So what it is? We'll say what Slack is, and I get then. Then now this is what Teams is. Microsoft Teams is. So you've got say you sign up. You've got a a, a, a room. Say right. Uh, you can put sub rooms in there, and then you can invite certain people to each. Mm. room and then say one might be general chat one might be programming chat one might be weekend chat and then you just chatter like i suppose similar to skype in each of those rooms so they're not emails uh they're just just one light just you know joe says this boop uh and it's written uh, or then jordan and bloop and it's written uh just things like that and it, it's just a team collaboration tool but so Microsoft has seen that Slack was great, gaining some traction, and Microsoft did have Teams, but it was a paid-for uh, bit of software because you know they, they're trying to make money out of their business stuff, and it was for business. But anyway, uh, this story is about how they've put Teams now is for free. Now a certain part of it's limited, but it's still very. Uh, well, that's uh, really good. It's very. Uh, it'll do any. It'll do. I think it'll do most what most people want to do. Now, the new free version of Teams is available from this week. Has up to you can have up to three hundred users, and so all these all these limitations that I'm going to speak about now are, are probably more extended. That they're not as limited in the business version, the paid version. So, uh, business up to three hundred users features unlimited chat and searches, audio and video calls, ten gigabyte of team file storage, and another two gigabyte for personal storage. So I'll give you a look at the dashboard. Now, I know you guys on the Jordan and Joe can't see this, but uh, believe me, there's a picture going up. Uh, it also provides access and integrations with the online version of Office 365 applications, including the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, along with more than 140 third-party integrations with the likes of Adobe, Evernote, GitHub, and Trello. Microsoft said at the time that it had opened up the API set for Teams to allow partners to develop connectors for their customers' applications to integrate into the platform. And then people that have, uh, or organizations that have taken this up, uh, ServiceNow, whatever they are, SAP, and Twitter. So good. <laughs> Twitter's, Twitter's everywhere. So look, the Teams is, yeah, and that's another thing. I think we, I can, you know, if you, if you go to the Microsoft world, you're starting to get a full suite of p- real professional sort of, you know, um, applications. And the good thing is they've got a 1-3 number. You just ring them and you can get help. And it's just, I think this is the way to go. Sorry, Google. Yeah. But... Oh, look, I've been, I've been working with, um, with a guy today, actually, <laughs> who runs a, a, a towing business. And um, he said to me that Microsoft, he, he's been using them. He, he gets a little bit frustrated with their OneDrive thing. He said that the, it gets a bit annoying, but he said they've got everything. And like you say, the one three number, you can ring up and hmm. plenty of support. But he said the add-ons and stuff that you can do, you know, or you can have your email servers with them. You can do everything with them. He said it's just the way to go. He said it's just an amazing – they've just done amazing. Their strides ahead mm. in, in, with their online cloud stuff. The only thing that I find frustrating with them is – and I don't still don't know what the go is – but trying to reset a password like for your live account or something. Have you ever tried to do that and it comes up and says, oh, thanks for all that information. We'll let you know within 30 days. Well, what is that? 
Oh, how long? But, how many times have you tried, or how many times have you not? Yeah, I, I yeah, suppose they've got to have some sort of yeah. Yeah, like it's it what hasn't been for me. It's like when I go out to someone's place and that you know they can't do stuff. And the normal thing is, you know, when they say they don't know the password, you go, here we go, there's, there's an hour gone. <laughs> you know? And so you sit there trying to figure out passwords. Uh, but, you know, I've got to pay for it, so who cares? Look, I think but, I've seen that happen before with password, and it's it's usually it takes a long time if you've, you you don't know it or you've had to reset it too many times or something like that. Mm, yeah, it is something like that. It is something like if you, you go, you, you can't get it through SMS uh, or you, you can't, you don't have access to the uh, to the email address, the backup email address. Then you go through. Well, what's some questions? Then you might go through. Do you remember a subject of uh, you know blah 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 blah? And then at the end it goes. Oh, thanks for all that. We'll let you know within thirty days. <laughs> oh my god. So anyway, just open a new account. Uh, all right. Uh, who else has got something else? Joe, you got any more? Yeah, well, you open a new account and get get more space in your OneDrive. That's right. <laughs> Joe, how you going over there? Yeah, no, I'm right for this week. That's it. Uh, did you have any more, Jordan? Oh, only only things to talk about because of my stories. I was going to touch on. Um, I was going to tell you that my remote utilities application has finally expired from the thirty day trial that you picked me up on. Have you tried that since we talked about it? The remote desktoping thing instead of TeamViewer as an alternative. No, but only because I paid for SplashTop. Oh, you paid so, for SplashTop. Yeah, right. I didn't. Well, I, I registered today with the free the free license. Yep. So once the 30 days expire, to get the free license. And it just added, like I said, it would the 10, 10 uh, connections in yes. your address book. Yes. Which you can take your address books in and out or get a different address book. So you can probably put 10 connections in one address book. And then when yes. you want to use, you know, use another business on another address book. So it looks like it's going to go good. Right. It's got heaps of cool features in it. So, and you haven't paid anything for it? That's you right. haven't paid anything for it. Not a cent. Yeah, right. Okay. Like I said, each it calculates. So you could have like five address books. Yes. Um, with like a you know with two connections in each address book, and that still totals ten connections. So, but the the address books you can actually um, remove them. They're just XML documents. So you can actually within the application itself, you can actually remove it and then load another one or unload one or unload another. Right. So I imagine you could just probably like take take your family, whatever, and put them mm. into one address book. And then if you know you're going to be working with the family that day, load up that address book, you know. But you is that, know. when you say uh, remove and whatever, activate, deactivate, or remove, replace, or whatever. Well, it's it, just basically a selection of the XML file. Right. So it's not it's not like a you have to go open, search for it, bang, and then open. I haven't tried that theory of just unticking it because it does list... It does list the address books in a page, right? And then you've got like a little checkbox, and you can check on and off the ones you want. Yeah. I haven't tried that to know if if just unticking one would remove those at those connections from the quota. Yeah. Uh, but I do know that if you remove it, you just unload it and reload it by going open file and then. Mm. Select the XML and then reload it, which is you know it's no biggie. If you're trying to get something for free, who's complaining? Really? Yeah, but isn't it like yeah? I think we've been through all this, but isn't it like it's only like a hundred bucks or something, and, it, and it's a forever license or something, something like, like that? that? It was it was yeah. pretty cheap one off license. It was if you wanted to get it, but you know what? Since then, I've spoken to other people who use TeamViewer, and they're really quite annoyed with this new change that they've made with the whole hour hourly basis thing so what's you know, the, what's it's the not hour? a number of connections it's instead a ma- amount of hours you oh, get right. per month to use it so if you're making remote connections they all total up and at the end of the month if you get to your yeah quota. right right oh that's no good it should be you kind of you know you find yourself connecting to someone for 30 seconds and then you cut off you yes know? yeah well that's what happens to me because i didn't pay him and i they don't realize i don't think team viewer you surely team viewer realize that 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 the, the the prime market for their business is the techies. It's mm. the, the guys like you and me and, you know, the, the, the kid in the family that's got a bit of tech, you know, well, knowledge. You can help grandma out and they're just kind of isolating them. It's not the clients that yeah. need, need so the what services. Are they wor- what are they worried about? Are they worried about the bandwidth? Is everyone using too much bandwidth or something? Who but, knows? Yeah, I don't know it's either. It's quite frustrating, but remote, remote uh, utilities. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Eric just posted now they throw him out after five minutes. 
Yeah, well, keep going, Eric. You'll, they'll throw you out after one, like me now. <laughs> yeah, I was down. I was connecting and literally getting disconnected straight away, thinking, and with no warning, I'm thinking, what's wrong? Mm. Something's wrong. I kept trying to connect. I'm going, is there a problem with my internet connection? And then I realised after reading the fine print, you have used up your monthly hours. Oh, geez, I haven't come across that. I've come across that we reckon that this is commercial use, so you can't connect and for five minutes or something like that. But I haven't come across uh, that. I was told I used up my hours. Yeah, well, I... And I think, you know what, I was probably uploading a file to a friend or something or or mm. watching an install or something on their computer that took an hour or something and probably wasted up all my minutes that way. But I used to, I've left that on overnight. But anyway, I subscribed to flash, the splash top and it, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I, it's, it's, not, it's not that good that I won't look at your one remote desktop when it expires but yeah because i think i think that remote desktop could be the go but let's get so the perfect thing with remote utilities yeah is it's 10 connections Mm. no time limit right right and and not only that they do everything from um vpn um and terminal and all these different things you can connect to the computer and not even actually remote desktop you can do terminal um command line stuff you can do vpn and network file sharing all that stuff without actually connecting well, our, our, our resident iDrive lover, Eric, he's a, he, Eric. Just, he just said that he uses Remote PC Suite by iDrive, which is free. So yeah, a, but he also uses iDrive yeah. oh. <laughs> for his uh, cloud space too, he said the other week. That's right, right, yes. But there's nothing wrong with that, is there? iDrive? No. No. Well, I looked at it. I was half tempted. I'm, I'm, I'm three quarters tempted. Yeah, I've got to get off crash plan because I've got to... I've got to uh, uninstall and reinstall it every week so I can see my server. I don't like it. Uh, let's. I've got another one. Three D, three D printed gun blueprints. Remember these were banned uh, from uh, from being uploaded to the internet. So the three D, you know, you print your plastic, you know, print, 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 print. Three D printers. Uh, you can print guns. Uh, they were banned, but now they are back. The first printed firearm, which was made in two thousand and thirteen. Files showing how to replicate the process were then put online and downloaded more than 100,000 times. The US government ordered them to be removed. So it argued that it violated the International Traffic in Arms Regulation, but we all know what trumps the international traffic... No pun intended, but we all know what trumps the International Traffic in Arms Regulation, and that's a good old constitutional amendment. So the defence distributed which made the plans for the gun joined forces with the second amendment foundation set up in 1974 which was to defend the rights to own guns to sue uh, the state department over the clampdown of this of uploading the things the u.s justice department has now said that americans may access discuss use and reproduce uh, the technical data the cad computer aided design files would go back online on august the first now I don't think this is a very good idea. I think they should be remain banned. I know that people will be able to get them off the black market, probably, you know, the 100,000 that download and probably still have them and, and all this. But I, I think this is just... Why, why, why would you want to, you know, like freely or or um, just make more in there, make it avail- easily more easily available to put more guns into the society? I think it's... I don't think it's right... Uh, and I, I also I understand the Second Amendment. Why I understand it all, but it doesn't mean that it's right, does it? I don't think it's still right. Uh, so they, apparently, these things are called ghost guns. They the decision will result in a rise in the so-called ghost guns, which are the unregistered weapons created without the government knowledge. God, how bad's that? But anyway, that's what's going on. So. Um, I, I, look, I don't understand either if these all... Do these things go through metal detectors? Or because they're... Pla- I suppose something has to be metal, like the bullet, I guess, has to be made out of some sort of metal, doesn't it? But, um, or maybe the firing mechanism, but the, the outside of the gun like this, old matey, yeah, I don't know too much about it, but I just have the belief it shouldn't be there. And look, I've got a, a rich list update for you. Amazon... Rich list? Yeah, Amazon... Are you on it? No. Yeah, I'm, I'm on it. I am on it, but I'm last. <laughs> so Jeff Bezos beats Bill Gates in the new rich list. Uh, net worth, his net worth has increased by oh, how's this? In twelve months, his net worth has increased by over sixty billion. Jeez, he must be just you know, asked out of his pants, mustn't he? Which makes him the world's richest man. This place places his worth 
higher than Bill Gates, who previously topped the rich list, as we all know. Um, I thought Bill Gates was ninety billion. Uh, well, he's number two. Bill, mm. he's number two now. So Bill Pete in nineteen ninety nine, just before Windows Millennium Edition, <laughs> Windows two thousand. Th- then he was worth a hundred billion, which would be around about one hundred and forty nine today. So that just shows you, like, oh, just how how rich Bill Gates used to be as well. Not you know as well as the Jeff Bezos. Didn't he say, I, I think Bill Gates said that when he dies, he's going to leave a B and each to his grandkids, and then and then palm the rest off to charity. Mm. Yeah, I think well, he's already. I'm like, you know, what would you do with a billion dollars? They do they really need that much to the grandkids? <laughs> well, he doesn't want to leave the whole lot to him. That's for sure. He's. Uh, uh, oh, I think a billion's overkill, isn't it? <laughs> oh. If you had, if you have a hundred and fifty or a hundred billion, you'd have to leave. You'd leave a billion and hope they did well with it. You'd go, well, here's a billion. Yeah, go, go, go your own way. Do what you want with it. Well, uh, you'd leave me with a million. I'd be happy. Oh, I'd, I'd be happy with fifty grand. But wasn't he, <laughs> wasn't he famous for saying that? You know, if if he was walking down the street and he dropped five k out of his back pocket, it's more cost effective to continue to go where he's going than to stop and pick it up. That's how much like he makes an hour, you know. It's more cost effective in the. Well, think of just the interest alone. It's just the well, interest on the money sitting in the bank. Yeah, I'll be a massive, wouldn't it? Uh, but most, you know, no, well, not. I mean, interest that he makes on the money, not interest that they take or dividends or yeah, whatever. You know, yeah. like you get a even one percent interest back on your returns. You know, you get you get it in a good savings account that you get paid to have your money in there. Mm. So Gates is currently yeah, in second place with 95. He's given away over 700 million uh, Microsoft shares. That totals about 2.9 billion US in cash since 1996. So um, yeah, that's still a lot, isn't it? Yeah, but he's been doing some good work. He, he's, yes. uh, he's trying to eradicate malaria. I think he's teamed up with the Rotary. And he's uh, he's spending a lot of money trying to eradicate the malaria in the, in around the world. I'm thinking, is it? I'm thinking it's malaria, isn't it? It's yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, and I think there's only a small bit now left in Pakistan or somewhere where they're having trouble trying to trying to get rid of it. Oh, uh, he's got his fingers in heaps of that sort of medical mm. science stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, but not. But the, Jeff Bezos, he doesn't want to get left out of donations to things. He says he's selling about a billion of his Amazon stock every year to fund Blue Origin which uh, is a project founded to develop commercial space travel. So it's not the same as donating, is it? Because donating, there's no uh, no intention of getting your money back. But uh, Jeff is saying that he he's, he's in a commercial space travel venture, so he obviously commercial wants a return. Yeah, polio. Thanks, Eric. It was polio. Yes, I was just going to say that. Polio. Yeah, not, not, what did I say? Malaria. Polio. Thank you. Um, yeah, so look, here's a picture of... Oh, do I have a picture? I don't have a picture of Jeff Bezos. Anyway, you can Google him if you want. Um, now, I've got to think, how many more stories have I got? One more. One more to finish off the week. I'm glad you had some. I've always got some. <laughs> MBN Co. asks $11,000 per premises in areas if you want to switch to a different technology. Now, I wasn't aware that you could do this routinely, but apparently you can just ring them up and ask for a quote. So if you're not happy with your... FTTN and you want to be FTTP, you can ring him up and say, how much does it, uh, <laughs> how much does it, uh, just read an Eric, one of Eric's messages. Funny. What about FTP or SFTP? Or, uh, um, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> that's the email thing. <laughs> just confusing you. SMTP? That, that, you yes. that one as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's for emails. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the yeah, so business on the central coast they got a quote to upgrade from fibre to the node to fibre. Eric said, Eric said he found a cure for the bombers. Yes, <laughs> he got the sack. So anyway, yeah. this quote to upgrade from from a multi dwelling unit was from uh, it was eleven thousand dollars, nearly twelve thousand uh, dollars to to upgrade from fibre to the node to fibre to the premise. Now, yep. now, people, you, you apparently can ring up and, and just ask, to, to, what's the quote? Now, there's a lot of people asking for quotes, not many people going through with it. Uh, there's a, a multi-dwelling unit in Tugra on New South Wales Central Coast wants to upgrade connections from FTTN to FTTP. The cost per premises was high due to the distance from the node, MBN said. So it didn't say whether the applicant had signed off nor how many premises were in the complex. So figures released last month show that less than 1% of area switch, as they call it, 
applicants actually approve their quotes. Now, I've got a little graphic here for those on the on the videos. Uh, it said the lowest cost per premises quoted last year was 840 in Mooloolaba in Queensland. So that's what that's low enough to go hmm. Mm. You know, and it noted this was lower as it was for a conversion, yeah, from the FTTN to FTTB, which is, if you don't know, fibre to the basement. Yeah, so... Uh, See, I remember when NBN, like when they were first talking about it and um, and it started, they started to roll it out. And then I remember someone telling me, and I don't know how true it was, that people like Optus and Telstra and all them were going to offer payment plans to just the general residents if they wanted to go from from the uh the fiber to the curb or fiber to the ha- sorry from the node to the house or whatever yeah um on a payment plan like you would get with your mobile phone like you contract to us for for five years and we'll we'll throw it in for an extra 25 bucks a month kind of thing mm. but i don't know whether that actually eventuated but it sounds similar and what you had something joe to, to you wanted to say on that one Oh, I was just going to say, I was just going to say, um, with connections, uh, this is Victorian couple that's been quoted up to one point two million dollars to connect NBN to their for, to their service. Right. Well, well, that must be so that so you'd have to think in that situation that they're not in an NBN area and they want to start pulling fibre from the next suburb or something. Yeah. That must be what that. Yeah. Well, like we got two. plenty of money and you haven't given it to us first. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a fair chunk of change, isn't it? But I think uh, I know uh, Chris, who listens to us, he, he's he got a node and it's, I don't know, 700 metres, if that, from his place. Uh, and I think before he got the MBN, I think he was quoted by TPG that he could pull fibre down his street for seven grand. But now he's got the the fibre to the node. It's got to be cheaper if he wanted it. But I think he's, I think his fibre to the node's working pretty well because he's fairly close. But a lot of people... A long, a fair little way away from the node, and that the the service degrades over that distance. So, but it looks like there could be a solution if you're ready to, if you want to stump up for it. So yeah, but like if it's like a thousand bucks to two thousand, and you're gonna stay in the place for a little while, you'd have to think mm, this could be worth it. You know, just to maybe get a stable, uh, good connection. You you'd you'd be thinking about it. Depends what you're doing. Like if you're working from home, like like I do, yes, uh, that would be worth. If you're just watching Netflix, yeah, you got I too think much the price money. we pay for, you know, for MBN these days with any of them, I think we we should be getting mm. a stable connection, and we shouldn't have to be forking out extra money to get a stable connection. But yours is if you stable. You want to get a faster connection, maybe. Yours is stable. Want to, yeah, mine's st- fairly stable, and I get about I get about seventy five megabits a second or something. Yeah, right. Um, Downloaded about thirty-five up, but you know I'm one of the lucky ones. But I, you know, but I suppose my point is, you know, with Telstra, it's it's kind of you're looking at ninety bucks a month minimum. Mm. Yeah, well, that's you know, yeah, mine's ninety-nine. You know, and and you you should be getting a stable connection for that. You know, and everyone says you should go to Telstra because its quality's better, the quality's better, blah blah blah. But you know, if you want to pay another five grand to have it connected from the node. You know, I mean, and only Fire's so many people there. can be connected to the node too. I mean, you want to bottleneck it all at the node and then start connecting everyone in the street off the node. But everyone is connected at the node. Anyway. But they're yeah. all connected to the node anyway. It's just it's just the copper from the node. It's either you, you, you're given copper from the node to you or do you want to stump up a thousand bucks to replace that copper with the fibre? Yeah, um, that's right, which is going to give you speeds of above, above 100 megabits, isn't it? Isn't that? Oh, I'm not sure if the plans. Probably theoretically, yes, it could. But I, no change to the cost of your monthly bill. Only the outlay of the expense to put it there. I don't think there's any plans that would go above 100 megabits. Is there? Unless you start looking at uh, maybe a business type scenario. But I think a hundred. I think a hundred is about the top tier on most plans that I've seen anyway. But uh, but I, you know, so you turn around, you pay another five grand to have the have have it rolled out to your house, and you just but, so you can get a hundred megabits that you should be getting when you pay for it anyway. Yeah, but what the it's problem just, what the problem yeah. is is why people are looking into this is with the node and then the copper, it keeps falling over, it keeps going down. So that's mm. that's their problem. It's not stable. 
That's right. It's just the, it's not the speeds that force people to to move to to want to pay to get the fiber. It's the it's the reliability. It's not stable. That's right. If it falls down, you try and do something. It should down. be really some sort of trial process, shouldn't it? It should be like, well, we'll give you you know MBN for a month and see how you. Your speed goes, and then we we they should charge them accordingly. They shouldn't charge them the same price as everyone mm. else. But um, with yours, Joe, your uh, cable connection, do you pay for the speed boost? No, I, I do. No, I don't. I don't pay for the speed boost. Right. Yeah, because because what's your speeds now? They've just increased your, haven't they? They've gone. You're up to about thirty down still, or you've gone up a bit. No, I'm, I'm still uh, one meg up and on a good day, uh, somewhere between 80 and 90 uh, down. Right. Hey, but I'm sure they increased your up, didn't they? Because I know they increased my up because I pay for the speed boost, which gives me the 100 down and now I get five up, which used to be only two. I thought they increased yours as well. They may not have. They maybe kept your up the same. I didn't. I didn't ask for it to be increased. Uh, I just got it. I just. I yeah, just got same. a new modem, yeah, which right. is the Doxus Three modem. If you pay for the boost, it should it should boost you up and you down anyway. It wouldn't just it wouldn't boost just one and not the other. Well, they can because they throttle. They throttle it. That's why they. That's but why. Wouldn't the boost include both up and down? Well, if they want it to, it doesn't have you, to though. Well, you're saying they can turn and go. Yeah, we'll boost your download for fifty bucks, and we'll boost your upload for another thirty bucks. They could. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think the speed boost works that way. I think it just boosts you down, not up. Because with the MBN, I, I pay for the boost and I get boosted up and down. So on the standard connection, they say you get about 23 megabits down and kind of what, like five or 10 megabits up or something. And then you pay for the boost to the medium rate, which is about 50 megabits down and, and you up you uploads go up a bit more and then the third the third point is to up to 100 megabits all right Damn. so, so just, just just to put this conversation the rest i googled it our google friend telstra confirms the cable broadband speed boost this was april 2018 telstra has announced boosting the speeds across its cable broadband network for around 500,000 customers lifting maximum download speeds on its standard plan that'd be you joe from 30 to 50 megabits and maximum upload speeds from one yeah. to two so, uh, oh no, they, and maximum increase the ups as well. Mm. Yeah, and maximum upload speed from one to two to five across all plans. <laughs> so mm. this is saying, Joe, you must be able to get five up as well. It, what across all plans, even without the boost? Yes, yes, so that's a standard. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I just did a a um, speed test, a speed test, and I got sixty nine point two down and point four two up. Oh God! Well, there you go. <laughs> But, is but that, I've got latency of point uh, seventeen milliseconds. That, what, what's the what's it telling you? Megabits or megabytes or kilobytes or megabits? Megabits. And uh, well, that's low then for your upload. Oh yeah. So is that Wi-Fi though? Are you on Wi-Fi? Uh, no, my computer's running on a, on an Ethernet. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me let me do a speed test and then we'll finish up. Uh, speed. You know, I will. I, I I am still on this. If you pay for it, you should get it. You know, and, and just to put. And then another analogy on it, just because I felt frustrated, frustrated by it this week, you might find it amusing. I went to McDonald's and I bought an egg and bacon McMuffin meal at three o'clock in the afternoon because I'd had a bit of a sleep in that day. It was still breakfast for me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I walked in and the day before I'd had an egg and bacon McMuffin and it was $8 something. And then the next day it was $9 something. And I said to the lady, I said, you put your prices up. And she goes, yeah, we put them up just yesterday. And then I drove out of the drive-thru and I stuck the egg and bacon muffin meal in my mouth and I started eating the muffin. I swear it was like eating a shoe. <laughs> and I thought to myself, why the hell can you, how the hell can you put your price up to $9 something and, yeah. it, and expect me to drive out this drive-thru and eat a shoe? You know, it's quality of food. If you want me to pay nine dollars fifty, I want my egg and bacon with muffin fresh. Well, you know what you do. And if you want me to pay yeah. ninety bucks for your crappy MBN, I want it to be bloody perfect. None of this, you know, it it annoys me. You pay for your quality of service, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think you just gotta you gotta vote for your with your feet as far as you can, as much as you can. And if you can't, you just gotta put up with it, don't you? Like, yeah. And how many people drive out of the drive-through and don't go back? Mm, I wouldn't and complain. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's right. Because well, they're in their car driving and haven't got time to turn around and go back right. and say, make me a fresh one. But then how many people go back anyway the next week? 
and keep going back because they love it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Joe, I got, I just did a speed, you couldn't see it, but my speed test was 12 ping, 52 down and 3.3 up. So that was my, uh, speed. So you might have a problem there, Joe. I just, I just did another speed test and I got 89.9 down and 0.81 up. Mm. What side are you using? Speed test. I'm using the Google one that pops up. You know, the very first one that pops up. Yeah, I like speed you just, test. You just type in a test, uh, speed test. Yeah, I, I tried speedtest.net. I find it to be quite accurate. The Google one is 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 too in, intermittent for me. I'll tell it's you what. Different in every every time you do it, I reckon. Try. Okay, I'll, I'll do one with uh, speedtest.net. Let me see how that goes. Yeah. And I've just done mine. I'm looking at. Uh, here we go. Downloads at the moment, and currently I'm streaming. 72 megabits. Oh, stop it. It gets up to 73 and a half, but I'm using, using the, and now it's doing the uploads. Here we go. Uh, 20, 25. I'm uploading to face, Facebook at the moment. It's 26, 27, stop 28. Wow. 29. 102.36 using speedtest.net. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. I can get 115 out of it. But my, my, I just did that Google one, Joe. I got, uh, didn't give, oh yeah, got me, oh, latency to Sydney, 168. That's probably not, well, that might be a bit much. But my download was 53.1, my up was 3.03. So you might Yeah, have... and my up on this one was 1.23. Right. So it's a big difference. <laughs> mm. yeah, I, I agree with you, Eric. An egg and bacon roll from the corner store is probably a hell of a lot better for six bucks. Probably twice the size and twice as fresh. Mm. I reckon. All right. Well, let's uh, let's finish up. If if everyone's finished with their stories, I think that's good. All right. So uh, thanks for the you guys for uh, coming in the Facebook Live. We did uh, did make it through. We had a little bit of a shaky start, but we got there. Uh, Jordan comes to the rescue with his <coughs> MBN <laughs> uploads. <laughs> so, I say there's a lot of posts there from Eric. I'd be a bit worried. So I think um, not a stalker, is he? Who's this Eric guy? Oh, I don't know this Eric guy. I think he's. A, I think he likes Tim Cook just quietly. So, uh, so um, oh, you're going to hurt his feelings. You're going to you're going to hear about that next time he speaks to you. <laughs> Probably. So uh, yes, yes, Facebook Live. Yes. So I think uh, I think Jordan, you've got the job for Facebook Live because obviously I'm not going to be able to do it until I was I get... hoping to have next week off. Well, you can. We might. We just don't do Facebook Live when you're off off the show. Yeah. Uh, um, Okay, so yeah, thanks for thanks for downloading and YouTubing and all the rest of it. Get the show notes at the aussietechers.com.au forward slash podcast. You'll find the show notes there. Uh, thanks to you guys for coming in. Joe, thanks again for coming in and uh, sharing your stories. No worries. And, uh, Eric says that's Eric says that's his contribution for the year. <laughs> and and we can't read his second Tim comment. Tim Cook can Tim can Tim Cook can get um get off the Apple thing and move on. Yes. Eric, that's, he uses the word that I've got to edit Eric out with when he says it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah, th- thanks, Joe. Yeah, thanks thanks for all that. Uh, look, I'm going to send – I've got something I want to send you, Joe, at Facebook. I'll send it to you later. It's someone sent it to me, but I'll show it to you. Maybe it's something you're interested in and might want to have a look into. And, Jordan, thanks for that. Thanks for coming in again. Thanks for um, uh, sorting out the Facebook Live when mine failed again. So cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for downloading. Send us an email if you have to, or if you want to, you don't have to. Send us an email and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll answer it for you. Read it out on the show. Good stuff. All right. Thanks, everyone. Go the Sharks. How good are they going? And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.